sunrise, new day's dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee, we've got good lands, fields, and water. Hey, there is. Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning and welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray as we close out, uh, golly, July. Oh, I'm so glad when July is by. I'm even more happy when August is by. I know you guys that are out there that love to fish. And, and and do these things, but I'm primed for hunting, and Ron Wong is primed for hunting too, because he wants to get us off, off out of the <laughs> out of the way. And then Bill Bill Cooksey, of course, he's primed for everything. So uh, it is for Saturday, which means Bill Cooksey is joining us from uh, from pa- uh, Vanishing Paradise. And uh, good morning, Bill, and uh, thank you. It seems like yesterday we talked, but uh, good to have you on the show and. Uh, just in a minute, Bill's going to talk about a little something that went on for him this week that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And, of course, this is uh, BW. This is Bonus Wong, you know, the only person that we have on here twice just to make sure that we don't miss anything. And there's that familiar laugh that only Ron Wong can do. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Larry. <laughs> Good morning, Bill. How are you all? Awesome. Bill is awesome. I know that I'm, I've been better, but that's okay. Everything's fine. Uh, I, I, this show is going to fly like it always does on the fastest 90 minutes of an outdoor radio program. Bill, Ron, both have that format in front of them. Couldn't do it without Shelby McCall. She's got the format. Guys, I don't know where you're going to find the list like this. Uh, uh, Ron came through like he always does with the name you don't have to say KVD and you fishermen and fisherwomen out there. We don't have to say any more than that, that Kevin Van Dam is on this show this morning. So stick around for Kevin. Thanks to Ron. And, of course, I love to talk to James Hall, uh, the editor of Bassmaster Magazine, which continues to pour out great stories, a lot of things. And uh, they just recently did their Lakes of the decade, and uh, that all. Anytime you put a list together, I always had that problem when I was picking all Memphis football and basketball teams. Uh, you know, you made a lot of people happy, but you made more people mad. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when you don't have them on there, but James is going to talk to us, and then Jason Hart. Hey, I'm telling you what, uh, the young man's done well, and I I did not know, and Bill just mentioned to me that. He was right here at Avery, and uh, mm-hmm. and Bill hired him, and uh, and I knew him from Mossy Oak, and now he's with Hook, co-founder in business development, talking about the new products at Hook, thanks to Ron, and then I got my man on here uh, on today's show is Ben Thompson. If you're looking for a lift during this pandemic, if you are down and out and think things are bad, listen to this young man talk about his journey in a wheelchair to where he would have been leaving. He would have been leaving yesterday to be a part, well, he'd already been there, in Tokyo for the Olympics in archery. But he is a Paralympic champion, and that's Ben Thompson. And close out the show that we could probably just give him the mic and let him roll because (laughs) the the man knows how to put it together. As Terry Denman, all you folks know Terry from the – from Mojo TV, but he is also one of the he is the president and CEO of Mojo Outdoors and uh, spinning 
spinning wings decoy, Bill. It seems like that was yesterday. I'm, I'm not sure how long ago that was that we were in that controversy. About 98, 99 is when they first started showing up here. Golly. Uh, and, oh. and by 2001, the controversy was full-blown, and it yep. still persists. It still persists. And I think, and Terry was right there on the ground level, right? I mean, those guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But, Great uh, guy. As a matter of fact, all these guys, when I saw this list the other day when you emailed it out, yeah, <laughs> all five of them are absolutely the top of their profession. They are. These aren't spokespeople. They they are no no. They're the top of the profession. They are, and uh, and and I know Ron is just geared up. And Bill, I know uh, you had a you had a few things happen to you. Uh, you had something going on this week that uh, <laughs> that you need to tell us about and everything. Yeah, um, uh, it's it's been kind of a cool deal. Uh, Mike Butler from Tennessee Wildlife Federation and I are hosting some folks from our Great Lakes office, from National Wildlife Federation's Great Lakes office. And at the Great Lakes, they're really invested in trying to stop Asian carp yes. at those dams to yes. keep them out of the Great Lakes. So on Friday, and, so on Friday, you uh, you you were with these guys and, yeah. uh, and um, had a chance to take them out. So I, how many's coming down? How many were there? I mean, how many? It, it'll just be four of us. Four of you, and y'all were lo- looking for... Asian carp, right? Looking for silver. Looking for Asian carp and doing a little bit of fishing as well. Um, first thing was dropping my war eagle in the uh, uh, in Camden Bottoms. Hey, yeah. well, it's actually kind of hard to find carp jumping on the main lake. Uh, there are plenty of carp there, but most of them are staying deep. Staying deep. Right. And, you, and you had Right. A, so well, we just dropped the boat into the Camden Bottoms, and it's pretty easy to find some carp in there. They don't have anywhere to go, and it's shallow. And and then we got on the main lake and, and scanned some carp, showed them how they looked on the side imaging, that sort of thing. Uh, bass fished a little bit. And, of course, those guys had never seen a, a, one of these huge bull worms and strike team <laughs> XDs and all like, like we were fishing. So they were like, Good grief! What yes. are you trying to catch? Yeah, well, we we're trying to catch uh, some of those fish that you can also catch with your hands if you're if you're quick enough. But uh, oh, with the Asian carp, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. And Bill, none, Bill will try to get Bill on next week uh, uh, show to kind of as we uh, talk on that first Saturday uh, to get a little update on how things went uh, mm-hmm. while they're here. And I know uh, uh, Ron this. Uh, you're our fishing guru man. I tell you what, it's been hot, but at the same time, we get lots of pop-up showers, things along that line. I'm still hearing some good reports out of the Pickwick, and uh, in in fact, uh, down around Arkabutton, I've got some reports. But you you probably heard better than I have. Well, fishing is absolutely great right now. Believe it or not. Um, you know, Pickwick and, and all of the Tennessee River Lakes, even Kentucky Lake. Okay, that's what uh, Bill wants to know. Top water, hey, top water fishing fish is great right in the lake morning. Lake. And <laughs> then, you know, the fish will go out on the humps and ledges where you can catch them on Carolina rigs or using creature baits. Okay. Like rage bugs. Creature uh, baits, yeah. And then you can go, the crappie are phenomenal right now. I on have the seen I, it. yes. I-55 lakes from Arca Butler all the way down to Ross Barnett. I'm going to include that, too, because they are, you know, it's nothing to catch a two-pound crappie right now. And a couple of good ways to catch them is uh, they're starting to catch them long lining. Yeah. And they're also starting to catch them trolling crankbaits using say a striking 3xd yeah, that's and what a Bill said. Yeah. or a black uh they're really biting good and on arca butler if you're wanting to go there yeah um they're catching them on jigs just straight jigs with a, a minnow tipped on it around the green bushes that are that still have Seven to eight feet of water on them. Listen it, to it's that. It's phenomenal. Listen to that. Did you see that picture of uh, Jim Gately's grandson with that big crappie? Oh, There's, yeah. two oh, Over two, two pounds. pounds. Over two out pounds. Out of Arca Butler. And, out of uh, Arca Butler. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, Jim has been fishing it, well, and we're going to spill the beans to a certain extent yeah. for about 65 years there. Well, so he, he knew. He knows Arca Butler. He knows. He knew. He knew. <laughs> oh, he knew Noah. 
I mean, come on now. So, I mean, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> he makes us look like yeah, well, we, we won't get into that. But uh, anyway, I saw that picture and everything. And uh, a lot of people right now. Uh, and we'll talk to James about that a little bit. He wrote a great article. Uh, not only does he write for the magazine, but he posts some of the things. And early in July, I wrote an article about uh, the popularity of fishing and all the companies and the bait people. There. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, well, he's the editor <laughs> yes. of Bassmaster Magazine. Yeah. And, uh, it was... I have to tell you, and he, talk, he likes to talk about fishing in general, too. Well, sure he Like does. you're talking about, Larry. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And he does it all. Well, he, he this is what, and I'm going to get him on this, because he said if people concentrated on the really important things in life, there'd be a shortage of fishing poles. <laughs> and well, that, and and you know who wrote that is Doug Larson. Uh, you know, yeah. Have and you, you know, a, have you been in the academy lately? Uh, yes, no. yes, I have. There's a shortage of fishing poles. There's a shortage of fishing poles. If you've been in Best Buy, there's a shortage of TVs too. So I mean, we can. <laughs> well, have... <laughs> I will tell you what. So far this year, yeah, there has been eight million new anglers. Um, well, we had 40, to, 40 million to begin with, something like that. So, uh, 60, 62 million to God, begin with. Golly. Oh, and uh, and you, you're adding eight more million. It's amazing. Um, uh, every state so far has experienced record numbers of fishing licenses sold so far this year. Yeah, if you look, you just it's amazing. Google, Google James Hall and see that even states like New, New York. A thirty percent increase. Uh, uh, Iowa, Iowa, fifty-five. Oh, it's just we're going to talk to James. All right, we're going to take our first break of the morning. We're already rolling here on Outdoors with Larry Ray, Ron Wong, Bill Cooksey, co-host. Of course, we're quarantined here. Shelby McCall has put up with me again today, but uh, we're going to get through this on Outdoors with Larry Ray. So let's take a break. We'll be right back. 